Hey, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Dave Jacobson. In this video, I'm going to be going over a number of different ways you can set up QMaster. I'm mostly going to be setting up the labels that were seen in the product demo video. So if you haven't watched that yet, you might want to check it out. So once you've installed QMaster, you're going to launch it by going up to the window menu and coming down here to where the scripts are and finding the script. Mine's already open. And this is the compact interface. This is what you're going to be working with most of the time once you've set up all of your labels. So at first I've got the prep queue button. This is what you use once you've dropped your comps into the render queue and you want to apply all the label settings. Next I've got a function called ignore warnings and render. You need to be careful with this command, but this can come in really handy when you drop in, say, a dozen comps into your render queue and you need to overwrite a dozen files. Rather than clicking OK 12 times, you can click this button one time and it'll bypass all the warning messages. Again, you need to be very careful with this command because it is going to bypass all warning messages. Last, you've got quick labels. And all these are really doing are adjusting the label color. So it's no different than going over here to this menu and choosing one of these colors. The advantage in quick labels is that you can actually see the colors and then you can also customize the buttons however you want. And they're all readily available. You don't have to go inside of a menu to get to this. Okay, let's move over to the full tab now. This is where we're going to be associating all of our settings with the label colors. So let's start with something simple. I want to set up the green label to handle my final renders. So I'm going to go to the label menu right here and I'm going to go down and choose green. The next thing I'm going to do is make a quick label button for that. So I'm going to type in the word final. If I look over my compact tab, I can see that I have final now on that button. I can go ahead and highlight this first comp and I'm going to mark it final. I can drag it in my render queue and then I would hit prep queue. Nothing's happening because I haven't set up any of the settings yet for this label. So let's go ahead and do that now. So first I need to enable an output module. There we go. And then next I need to apply my templates. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply my render settings template. Normally you would do that right here, but I said I'm going to do it right here. If I go in this menu, it's actually empty right now. I need to refresh my templates. So I'm going to click on this button and now all my templates have been populated. So I'm going to use best 16 entire timeline. And then I add the template using this little arrow. Next, I want to do ProRes. I'm going to do ProRes 4x4. And then again, I'm going to hit this little arrow. So now if I hit prep queue, and by the way, there's another one right here so that you can test out your settings without having to toggle over to the compact tab every time. I'm going to hit prep queue, and now I can see that my settings have been applied. If I were to hit render at this point, it would render it out to the default file path. I want to make sure this goes into the right project, so what I'm going to do now is set up a relative file path. All I need to do is go down here to my file path type and set relative. So once again, if I hit prep queue, now the file path should be adjusted. You can't really see it, but if I hit render, there's my file right there. But here's the thing, I don't want it to go into my AE folder, I want it to actually go into my renders folder. So here's how I can do that. I can adjust the parent folder value and just set that to 1. That's going to tell it to go to the After Effects project and then go up a level from that. So again, if I duplicate my comp, prep the queue, and then I hit render, now that render has gone into the root of my project. Still, it's not inside my renders folder, so I need to tell it to go in there. Let's go ahead and delete these two files. All I need to do now is type in renders. There we go. I can duplicate this item one more time, hit prep queue, and now I'm going to hit render. Perfect. Now it's inside my renders folder. One last thing I want to do. I want to have versioning for this. I'm going to go over here to version, and I'm going to do a two-digit version number. Let's go ahead and clear out the render queue. I'm going to add this one more time. I'm going to hit prep queue. I can see that my V1 has been added on there, but you know what? I want there to be a space between the comp name and the version number. So I'm just going to add a space in my suffix. I'm going to hit prep queue one more time, and now my space is in there. Let's render. Perfect. So now I've got my QuickTime, and it's a V1. Let's go ahead and delete out this old one. And then I can duplicate this now. I can hit prep queue, render, and now I've got a V2. So now I'm in business. Okay, now let's make a label for client approvals. So I usually use Cyan for that. I'm going to go down here to Cyan, and I'm going to type in APPRV. Great. So if I check my Compact tab, it's showing up right there. I'm going to come back in here, and it's actually going to be very similar to the green label. So let me go back there for a second. I'm going to just hit the Copy button right here. I'm going to go back to Cyan, and now I'm going to hit Paste. And then I'm just going to change a few things. For my client approvals, I don't need ProRes 4x4. I'm going to just do ProRes Proxy. So I'm going to select that in this dropdown, and I'm going to hit this little arrow. Great. And the only other thing that's going to be different now is I actually want that to go into its own folder. So I usually do an underscore approvals. 
I use the underscore so that the folder will float to the top. So let's try it out. I'm going to clear my render queue. I'm going to grab a few comps right here and I'm going to mark them as approval. I drag them in and I want to show you a little trick. If I hold down the shift key when I hit prep queue, it's going to go ahead and start rendering so you don't have to go up here and hit render. And there it goes. Notice that it made the folder right here. Qmaster is going to make any folders that don't exist. If I look in here, I can see I've got v1s. I'm going to render these one more time and just make sure the versioning is working. Prep queue, and there it goes. My v2s have appeared. That's perfect. I'm going to collapse this. Now let's do our picture reference label. Once again, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go to purple. I'm going to hit paste. And I'm going to type in pref for picture reference. And the only difference here is the folder. Perfect. Let's go ahead and clear the render queue. Let's highlight a few comps. Let's apply that label. I've got picture reference right here. I'm going to drag this in my render queue and I'm going to hit render. There we go. So there's my picture reference folder. Okay. Now I want to show you a quick feature that I didn't cover in the product demo. I'm going to go to my red label and I'm going to type in DNR for do not render. I'm going to go over here to this little checkbox that says do not render. What this is going to do is anytime I apply the do not render label to my comps, it's actually going to unqueue them in the render queue, which will prevent me from rendering them. So if I hit prep queue, you notice that these become unchecked. I tend to use this as a safeguard against sending out comps that aren't completed yet. Okay, the last label I'm going to create for this project is called multi. I want to make a label that actually has five output modules. I'm going to go down to sandstone and I'm going to make a label called multi. Check my compact tab and there's my multi button. Okay, so once again I'm going to hit paste because a lot of these settings are pretty close to what I want already. And I'm going to be making five output modules. But The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust this first output module. For this one I'll do ProRes 422HQ. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then I want to make a folder for that format. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and add my other output modules now. Two, three, four, five. And you'll notice that I've run out of space. So I've got a scroll bar over here that I can use to adjust. You can actually do 32 output modules in Qmaster if you want to. I think it's highly unlikely most people are going to need 32 of these. But that's what After Effects supports. And I don't want to hold anybody back from doing that. So I'm going to take this back down to five now. I've got this little clipboard over here for individual output modules. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to paste for each one of these. Note that you can also hit the tilde key to blow up this panel full screen. Okay, so now I want to do DNX. I'm going to add that. I want to do PNG. I want to do JPEG. And I want to do TIFF. And now I'll go through and set up all my directories. Now it might be a little bit tough to remember all these settings that I created when I'm looking at my compact tab. So what I can actually do is set up a note. I'm going to click the notes checkbox and what I could do is I could copy and paste all these formats into my note box. Now what I can do when I go in my compact tab is if I hold down shift and mouse over the multi button, I can actually see my notes. It says the name of the label and then below that I can see all the notes that I typed. You can do this for any label, and this is very helpful so that you don't have to remember everything. I'm going to go back in my full tab. Okay, everything looks good. So I'm going to tilde again and make this go back into the normal panel size. And let's highlight all my comps. I'm going to clear my render queue. I'm going to mark these as multi. I'm going to drag them in here and hit prep queue. So this has saved me a lot of work. It's generally very tedious to go through and add all these output modules, especially when you have a lot of comps. Also, if I look down here, I can see that all the subfolders were made for all my different formats. That's great. All right, let's move on to the next project now. You'll notice over in my project panel, I have a lot of subfolders that my comps live in. And what I actually want to do is replicate this hierarchy into my finder. So I'm going to make a special label for that called episodic. I'm going to use dark green for that. I'll enter my quick label. And now I'm going to go back over to my green label because it's actually pretty much all the settings I want. I just need to modify it a tiny bit. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go back down to dark green. And I'm going to hit paste. So these are all my settings. That's great. 
and I'm going to add one extra parameter, and that's right here. CPF stands for Comp Parent Folder. For example, if I set this value to 1 and I'm rendering lower third 1 right here, Keymaster would actually recreate this lower thirds folder in my renderers folder right here. If I set this to 2, what it's then going to do is create the episode folder and then the lower thirds folder and then render the comp into that. So this looks good to go now. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go to my compact tab. I'm going to highlight a few comps. I'm going to mark them as episodic. I drag them in my render queue. I'm going to hold shift and hit prep render. So it's going to go ahead and begin rendering. That's great. So it's making the subfolders in my finder. Okay, let's move over to our last project now. This one's going to get a little bit more advanced. What I actually want to do here is create a folder with today's date on it. And then inside of that, I actually want to make different folders for each of the resolutions of my comps. If I thumb through my comps right here, I can look and see that the resolutions are different for each one of these comps. I'm going to head into my full tab. I'm going to go to my aqua label and I'm going to make a label called date res. Once again, I'm going to hit paste and a lot of the settings I want are going to be applied. So I'm cool with these templates and I like the versioning being on there. That's all great. But what we're actually going to do is change the path type. So in here, I've got none, I've got relative, absolute, and I've got custom. We're going to use custom now. Qmaster has something called a custom file path builder. I click on this little arrow right here to access it. What's just happened is it's popped up a warning message telling me that it actually prefers for something to be in my render queue before I enter this tool. And here's why. The custom file path builder actually shows you a preview and it bases the preview off of the last item in your render queue. So I'm actually going to cancel, I'm going to go back out and I'm just going to drag one of these items into my render queue. I don't have to worry about applying a label just yet. So I'm going to go back into this tool and now the warning message doesn't display. So as you can see, I dragged in motion graphics 01 and now that's showing up in the preview. So by default, Qmaster is using a relative file path. But once again, I don't want that to go into my AE folder. I want that to go into my renders folder. So down here, I have all these variables. You have about 50 variables here to choose from. And here's how they work. I'm actually going to erase this. This is my file path. And I'm going to come down here to where the AEPs are and I'm going to set this value to 1, just like I did before in this interface. So I'm going to double click on AEP1, and now that's been entered into my file path. What I then want to do is add renders on the end of that, and then now it'll be applying this to the correct place. It's going to be in Project 3 Renders, which is right down here. Here's my renders folder. Now what I want to do is make a folder with today's date on it. I'm going to go ahead and add a forward slash, and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to find the year. I'm going to double click on the year and it's going to get entered in there. I'm going to double click on the month number and then I'm going to click on the date. So if I look at here in my preview, I can see that all these numbers have been added in here. Let's go ahead and separate those with periods. Perfect. Now, like I said before, I also want there to be a resolution folder. So I'm going to hit another forward slash and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to double click on width and then height. And there's my resolution right there. I'm going to separate that with an X. And here we go. I can see that the file path is doing what I want. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and close. So let's go ahead and clear out our render queue. I'm going to go over to my compact tab. I'm going to highlight all these comps. I'm going to mark them as date res. I'm going to pull them in here. And I'm going to hold down shift and hit prep queue. And immediately, I've got a folder with today's date on it. And if I go inside here, I can see I've got all the resolution folders as well. Let's go ahead and expand these. I just noticed that it looks like I forgot to add spaces in here. And the reason for that is because I switched from relative to custom, this suffix is no longer in use right here. So I need to go back into my custom file path builder and I need to add a space on the end of the file name. And now I can see in my preview that there's a space between the version number and my comp name. I'm gonna hit apply and close. I'm gonna delete this folder and re-render all these files once more with the correct file name. I'm gonna hold down shift and hit prep queue. And once again, After Effects will begin working after it applies all the render settings. I'm going to come down here, and now I can see that the space has been added between my comp name and my version number. All right, I think that about does it. So as you can see, Qmaster can be as simple or as advanced as you want, whether you're rendering hundreds of files or just jumping around from project to project. Please don't hesitate to shoot any questions or feedback my way. Thanks so much for watching.